Today I thought I'd paint some cumulus clouds. So let's start here. I'm going to take a mixture of ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo blue in it. And I always have a test sheet between my palette and my painting so I can test out my colors before I go to the actual watercolor paper. So let's just start. Let's just create some interesting shapes for clouds here. You notice I'm using a mop brush. Um, I want to be able to get that in there quickly. Something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that mop brush, I'm going to rinse it out, tap it on a paper towel, and just play with this edge. I might want to keep some of these hard edges, but others I want to go soft. So let's just see here. I just do kind of a circular motion on here. Again, I'm white washing it off and coming back in here again. Okay, let's come in here and break this side up here. I'll come in here so you can see it here. Just rinse my brush out real well here so it's clear water. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to take that, uh, take some ultramarine blue, just a hint of Payne's Gray with it. And we'll come in here and put some darker shapes in here. Again, I'm going to rinse it out. Just play with the edges of the color here. Maybe add a little blue in here. Just blue it up a little bit so it's not quite so gray. All right, now I'm going to add some uh, some Payne's gray to that. Or I take that back. I'm going to uh, I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that. Again, I don't like that shape right there, so I'm going to go back to my blue and my paints gray and play with that. The whole surface is still really, really wet. You notice I use a lot of water. That's why I have it taped down so well. I don't want to want it to curl up on me. Okay, that's a little better. I kind of like the bottom of that. I think I'll keep those hard edges right there. Now, when you mix your colors up, it might look great when you test it on your uh, paper here. Um, but if you just remember, it's going to dry lighter, 15, 20% lighter. So you're better off testing your color on a piece of scrap paper, drying it with your hair dryer, and then see if it's what you want. Because you may find that you need to add more pigment in it so it doesn't uh, look too pale especially with the blue back in here. Now I'm looking at this, I'm thinking maybe we can add a little more excitement in here by just pushing the blues a little bit more. And this is ultramarine blue with the Payne's, Payne's Gray. Just get a few darker clouds in here. Just to break up that shape, I want to come over here and just put a little extension out there. Just carry that out a little farther. And I think I'll leave that too. 
Some clouds have soft edges and some have some hard edges. So let's leave it like that. And we're going to put some distant clouds. Just stay horizontal here. Come in here. They're smaller in size. They're off in the distance. We want to get that feeling of aerial perspective in here. And I'm looking at that right now and thinking, well, let's, let's just play with that a little bit. Let's soften that a little bit. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to let this dry. I'll take my hair dryer to it. And then I'm going to uh, put some foreground in here just to give some perspective to the painting. Okay, it's not completely dry, but it's dry enough in here that I can stay down below this wet area. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. A little bit of sap green with it. Mostly blue though because I want this to be a tree line way in the background here. So, so let's just kind of lay something in here. And here I'm using a five gallon paint stirring stick. Uh, these are great if you need to make a straight line. So I just hold this up at a 45 degree angle. Rest the ferrule against the wood and ride my fingers on top. That way I can control the height of the brush. So let's just come in here. Now, a lot of times you can use your hand, you can do it freehand, but if you really want something really straight, like a distant horizon, especially if it's something like this, we'll just kind of have this be maybe along the coast somewhere. And uh, let me come over here and just kind of place some shapes. This is just the tops of some trees. Just having some fun. You don't need a lot of detail. It's way off in the distance. I'm going to dry that right now. Okay, let's put some of the sky colors now into this. Let's have this be a, a coastal scene. So we'll have this be water here. So I'm going to come in here with some, uh, some of my ultramarine blue, a little bit of Payne's gray, and just mimic what's up here in the sky. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to take this brush and fan it out. You want to stay horizontal with your strokes. If you move it quick, you get this dry brush effect, and that's kind of nice in there. It gives the idea that the sun's shining through there. Um, it gives you a little variety. If you put a stroke in like that, like I just did, it's not horizontal, just take a damp brush, just wipe it right out of there while it's still wet. Okay. Let's grab some of that blue up here. And we'll just pick up a little bit of it in here. It doesn't have to mimic perfectly what's up here. We just want to get that impression. Get this tape out of the way here. Again, if you make quick strokes, you'll get that dry brush effect. Again, I'll fan this brush out. Okay, now that's in there. This is still wet. Maybe I want to make that a little darker, like the sky is up here, this cloud. So I'm just going to drop some pigment in here. It's all real wet down here yet. If I, take, if I feel like it's too much, I'll just dry my brush on a paper towel, come in here, just pull some of that color off. I'm going to lighten it a little bit. Now over here I may want to push the blues a little bit more, so let's just come in here a little stronger blue. Again, use quick strokes, that way you'll get some dry brush effects. Okay, we'll stop with that. I'm going to dry that, and now I'll just put a little landmass in here. And if I happen to run out of time, I'll, uh, I'll dry it paint it in and show you that at the end. But the important thing I wanted to show you was the clouds. How to put that in there, keep it nice and loose and fresh. 
using a lot of water and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, let's, uh, let's put a little land in here just so we get a little more feeling of perspective on this. Let's, uh, let's start over here. I've taken some ultramarine blue and some sap green. Again, I'm going to take this brush. Let me just show you how I do that. I take my brush, drag it, give it a half a turn. I'm not pushing down hard. What that does, that feathers out the hairs and allows me to put in nice soft strokes. It's especially good when you're doing trees that are in the foreground real close to you. I don't want too much information here. Again, it's still off in the distance. It's not as far away as that, but it's still out there. So we don't want to get too much information. I'm just pushing the values so it feels like it's closer to us than this distant tree line back here. And now to join these here, I'm going to just take clear water and just sweep that this way and just sweep that. And it'll transition real nice into the background. Okay, I'm going to take those same colors, ultramarine blue, sap green. Let's just put a landmass in here. Maybe this is all connected in here. Juice it up here. Here we go. Again, I'm going to do some fast sweeping strokes. You can see the dry brush effect you get when you do that. I'm going to do over here the same thing. I'm going to connect this, fan the brush out. I want this side to look a little different than that side, so be careful that you don't get too symmetrical or too balanced. I'm just going to push my values so that the tree line back here and the foreground here are the same, same value. Again, that's ultramarine blue, sap green. Again, test your colors on your scrap piece before you, before you go ahead. Let's just bring this one out a little farther here. Yeah, I still fanned out that brushes. I don't know if you can see that, but you can get a nice, nice light touch with that. Again, by fanning out that brush, like that. I can use that same brush for indicating weeds. Now, you have to fan it out maybe several times. It all depends on how hard you push. If you push real hard, the hair, you'll push the hairs back together. But if you have a light, light touch with it, you can uh, paint more than one or two strokes before you have to uh, fan it out again. Okay, I want to hit this a little stronger. So I think it's going to dry a little lighter than I want. So I'm just going to add a little more pigment in here. Same over here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time over here because I know we have a 15 minute time limit here. Let's do that. And now let's get into some, uh, this is some raw sienna. It's a color, a lot of times you'll see a color very similar to this, the coast. A lot of the weeds right along the water are in this color range. If you've got a brush that makes a nice point, that's a great brush to uh, put weeds in. I take my brush, load it up, paint. I twirl it and pull away to get most of the water out, and at the same time, it's giving me a nice sharp point. And that way, you can come in here and you can put more delicate weeds in here. Let's finish it off here real quickly with just, just a couple birds in here. It's just a horizontal stroke and then an either up or down. And be very careful, you make your birds random. The tendency is to space them all out about equal. That's just like human nature. But by spreading them out, it looks more natural in flight. I hope that helps. Thanks.